Uh, our next session is to hear from our rapporteurs. So um, Sue and Samina are going to give us um, their key themes from the conference, and then we'll be closing in about 20 minutes' time. Okay, hi. <laughs> I think we've agreed that we're going to not do a, a descriptive run through the whole day because we, we know that you've been paying attention. So <laughs> We're um, not going to test you on that. No. <laughs> so we thought we'd look at the morning sessions, which now seems quite a while ago, uh, but just look at those case studies which we thought were stunningly uh, varied and really, really interesting. So we'd just like to say a few words about each of those yeah. and then we go on to talk about the afternoon. Do you want to kick off with blurred lines? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I was um, gripped by what the in-betweeners were doing. Mm -hmm. And it was better than the movie, I can definitely say that. Um, I love this way that you are the chain between staff, student, and also the, through your pilot, you're also becoming the chain, particularly for study skills, with, with the sort of, uh, the w, through the WP team. And then you're, as the cohort come through, then you'll probably be able to pick and pull a game. So you're almost establishing that learner journey um, right from WP, uh, pre-admissions, to when they're on course. And what I also am taking away from here today is uh, the activities that you do with them. The debating one, um, the use of the green card and the red card, I thought that was so inclusive. Because I thought, how do you do that with 300 in the theatre? But everybody's got a role to play just by holding those cards. I thought that was great. And I found what you were saying about looking at making it learner-centric. So yeah. thinking about the learner and how different learners learn yeah. and then modelling your activity around yeah. that. I think that's a message, very strong message for me, for me in particular because we're not trying to write even before they come to us, trying to design activities that we're trying to shoehorn them in. Um, I love the way that you were being very selective and making it learner focused. Um, and I think, in terms of for me, there's a, a lot that I feel I can take away and share with my WP team back at base. Yes, I'd like, and I forgot to say we've got our green hats on at the moment. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was fabulous. Um, I don't know if it's. Um, it's no disservice to the two research pieces, but maybe we should take those together. Yes, yeah. um, Dr. Duna Sabri and uh, Dr. Camille, who's still here, I think. She? Yes. <laughs> Which I, I thought those two pieces were very interesting. I mean, Duna's um, is still sort of coming about, really. It's still in uh, transitional phase, but um, the impact of uh, familial context on um, students and how that plays out in an area like the creative arts, which mm. I think um, mm. there's been quite a bit of research done on in the past as well. So that I've, there's more to come from that, obviously. I think it, I, I felt I'd only just got a, 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 a slice. A slice. I know. And I wanted more, actually. Yeah. Because we do a lot of work with gatekeepers, teachers, for example, and, pa yeah. and parents we know are very big gatekeepers in children's life as well. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see what she comes out with. Yes, yeah. it will. So we'll watch this space. And I'm going on to the QAA website to have mm -hmm. a look at your work as well, because um, that concept map idea which we used ourselves in the afternoon I thought was great and again uh, putting the ball in the students court around their own expectations etc um, I think at one point I wrote we shouldn't forget this um, and I think that was around um, when we talked about how we sometimes do forget how profound HE is for people and that um, transformational experience but at the same time challenging and stressful um, there's nothing like becoming a learner again I think mm. for you to put yourself in those shoes and you know get you out of your comfort zone and make you realize what challenges people do face um, the the thing about student choice and randomness um, and it reminded me again of the work that UCAS has done on segmentation. I and mean, they found young boys particularly bad at this, you know. And it reminded me of my own son who was getting in the car to go to university and he got the map out. And I said, well, enjoy your first day at Leeds, Blake. And he said, yeah, where is it? You know, not only did he not been for an interview or done much research or, you know, and you think, 
a girl wouldn't have done that. You know, yeah. been far more. But anyway, I have two um, sons. I can sympathise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I always think boys are less less baked than girls. Yeah, well, that depends. depends. <laughs> and it would come as no surprise to find him coming home after two terms. Actually, so uh, you know, it bears out the point that you you could do the bit of work going into finding out where you're going. No, I thought that was fascinating, and um, I'm obviously I'm going to be on the website to look that one up. Um, would you like to take Angela? Yeah. But I, again, I think Angela's angle um, um, in terms of mature and part-time learners and the challenges she faces, and um, for me, the biggest challenge was actually trying to find them. So, how do you target them? How do you how do you find them? Encourage them? And I think her links with um, other organisations was a really, really effective way of doing that. And I think it's a challenge for all of us in terms of mature and part-time learners. And then the sort of how sh the, the activities she's put in place um, in terms of ensuring um, they come onto the courses, the retention, the, the way she sort of, the, the, the support she has put around them, um, again, uh, inspirational uh, again what we can take away from that too I think that reminded me as well of um, Les Ebden's he calls um, finding adults a contact sport <laughs> you know they're not sitting they're not sitting in cohorts in schools etc and they are difficult to yes, access yes. Um, we were talking over lunchtime actually uh, Angela and I about um, some of the stuff that's been happening recently with the raising fees um, is actually quite counterintuitive. You would imagine that actually part-time would become more popular um, with certain people, but there's been this amazing dip in numbers. Even before the fees were raised, 52,000 less part-timers in HG, 40,000 less the year after. Um, I can't help believing if we got the pricing right and saw part-time more as a lost leader, that there is a market there for people who are in work but want to continue their education. But more of that anon. And then finally, we had Hazel. Well, this was amazing, Hazel. Um, I don't know how you found yourself in um, <laughs> Nepal either. <laughs> I can't that, answer that, that, is, that one. That is, that is stretching the definition of WP, yes, really. That is. <laughs> yes. No, I thought that was, uh, it was a very exciting presentation. It was interesting. It, Maybe you want to be in your class to, you know, take part in the Santa Run and all those other things. I thought it was fabulous. And um, actually, at the end of the day, it, if people, if students don't come and find uh, their experience engaging, fun, and all those other things, they're probably much more likely to leave us. So I think there's something there about this sense of um, welcomingness, belonging, all of those things, and being valued um, because if you don't feel those things you're probably likely to think well nobody's going to miss me if I leave so that's probably part of the, the mix that we all need yeah. so that was excellent and then we went on, on to this afternoon um, where we had our two workshops did you have some key issues that came out of yours I think um, there were issues around how we all use data differently. Um, I'm just trying to not repeat what Anne-Marie um, Anne just summarised. Yes. Because um, she was in the same group as me. Um, and we, I think we, we, we use data differently, but I think we all, uh, towards the end of it, valued that, that it is important to keep the data uh, because it helps us to measure our impact and it helps to show where we are working effectively through our various schemes and where we are not. Um, of course, data is not the solution to everything and doesn't provide answers to everything, but it does provide, I think, um, a, a means by which you can start to see any change in behaviour or where you need to perhaps uh, have the evidence to support future work going forward. We too had quite a divided opinion on that about, you know, at one end of the continuum where it can go into labelling to the other end of the continuum, whereas as you say, if you don't monitor some of this work, then you won't actually know if the things that you're putting in place are actually working. Yeah. So there, there's quite a dilemma in our group. Um, 
I think the other thing we picked up in our group came from the first presentation this morning on the blurred lines work, which I thought was really interesting, and that's we think about catering for individuality, yet your students, one of their lessons or, or messages to you was about equity. And I thought that was really interesting mm -hmm. because it you know it depends what perspective you're coming at this from. Um, and there's nothing like students to remind you, isn't there, about being treated equally, being treated fairly. Um, we had some very interesting concepts about what kind of learners are you. Uh, the travellers or explorers are, or the sat now um, students. <laughs> um, what I found in our group was that not many of us talked about the curriculum areas, the academics. And actually, when if you want a whole institutional approach, I think that's, I mean, it reflects who we are in the audience, etc. But um, I think there's something there about, well, and we've heard some of it later this afternoon, about engaging with all staff and making yes. sure that yeah. um, if, you, if you have a policy and a strategy, etc., that it goes across the institution. Mm -hmm. And we know uh, on the downside of that how variable that can be, mm -hmm. a lot being dependent on people, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, any other key issues from the groups that people would like to raise? We were keen that um, we weren't working on a deficit model. That was stressed several times. Yes, yeah. Um, I think increasingly everybody was feeling, um, particularly I think in, um, in outreach, that there is a strong demand for everything to be evaluated um, yes, and yeah. for there to be an evidence base. Yeah. Um, particularly when we're talking uh, about presenting information back to Offer or HEFGI. So we've got some external levers as well as internal levers in terms of, of what we do. Yeah. I think that goes back to the other thing about putting students at the centre of this, whether it's using their own experience that they bring to university and not discounting it, but also the experiential learning that we heard from yeah. this morning as well. Uh, because there was some key uh, big points made I think from Warwick about key transitional points yes. and making people part of the community yes uh, again if you feel a sense of belonging you're much more likely mm. to stay mm. uh, I think the transitional when you when you when I was doing my sort of um, uh, map of, of the learner journey if you like yes, that was the a good student exercise, site, it, it was a yes. very good because what it highlighted to me was um, you can cut it from so many different angles. I was trying to look at it from the point of view of a student. So, and looking at where their transition points are, right from primary to secondary, then from um, sixth form into university, and then from year one, year two, whatever it is, and then into employment. Each of the transition spaces, I think they perhaps are most vulnerable and where the support needs to come in. And that's perhaps also where we, as institutions, perhaps aren't so joined up either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tried to cope with that by putting the staff around the outside. Yes. Uh, attaching them to CPD, because a lot of this is about all organisational structures, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Um, and as we heard this morning, students don't necessarily see those structures. Mm. And so things that you do in one area um, possibly need to be done in another area, but they're not joined up. So somebody in a school might have an APEL policy, but somebody yeah. else hasn't, doesn't know about it or whatever. And I think the same thing happens with CPD. We spend an awful lot of time looking at management or time management or what about, you know, issues to do with teaching and learning, which after all is the business of the university along with research and, and other things. So it was trying to get a, a sort of seamless start, mm. not journey, but support mechanism in there somewhere. And, I don't know and also do to support that, a seamless flow of information. Yeah. yeah. So collect it once, use it many times, I think. Yeah. It's... Somebody said in our group it's difficult to generalise and I think, you know, that's a, a homily, but I think, it's, <laughs> I think it is true because we are all representing institutions who are at different phases and, and at different points. But I think there are some key um, lessons from today and as you said one of them is about evaluation mm. I think um, although we haven't got the combined joint strategy and we don't know if we'll have it next year yes. um, I think Les Ebden has certainly made it very clear that mm. um, you know it's no longer 
descriptive is no longer good enough. Mm. And that actually, you know, you, you are on a journey yourself in terms of longitudinal work around the differences you're making. So and I think this, this is something here the sector can build on. We can, yeah. we can do um, evaluation monitoring and measure impact in our own um, home, uh, in our own organisations, I think there is also a challenge here. As a sector, yeah. how do we then share that information so we get a more holistic approach to evaluation? I know there is a role in terms of offer and Hefke, they do some of that. Yeah. But as a sector, should we be setting ourselves those challenges too? Definitely. I think um, there's a whole thing there about the good news of the sector that um, gets lost sometimes yes. in all of this. Yeah. Um, the good work that people do do. Mm. I think today has been very um, inspirational actually mm. in terms of the different approaches that we've heard about.